levers the turning effect. Sometimes engineers refer to it as talk. Physicists refer to it as a moment. In Afrikaans, the dry moment, the turning moment. It's equal to the force times the lever arm length. And it's measured in newtons, meters. Newtons for force, meters for length. Consider a load on a balanced stick. The load is this distance from the fulcrum. We would call that the load arm. And the effort is applied further from the fulcrum and the distance from the fulcrum to the effort is called the effort arm. So we have the ruler balanced in the middle at the 25 centimeter mark. And we have two scales, a 0 to 20 newtons and 0 to 10 newtons. You take a 500 milliliter bottle with water in it. The density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. And so it has a mass of 500 grams. We place it 5, 10, 15, 20 centimeters away from the fulcrum. And we apply a force on the other side and we get the stick to balance. And when it is, we see it is also 5 newtons. The effort is 5 newtons while the load is 5 newtons. We record this. And now move the spring scale closer. We halve the distance. That is still 20. And this is 5, 10 centimeters from the fulcrum. And when we balance it, we see that the effort needed is 10 newtons to balance the 5 newton bottle. And now we bring it closer still to 5 centimeters, but it goes off the scale. So instead we use the other spring scale, the red one, which can have a maximum of 20 newtons. And when we balance it, we see the reading on the scale is 20 newtons. Now we move the bottle closer. We're going to put it 5 centimeters from the fulcrum. And we're going to place the spring scale again at 20 centimeters. And now we see a very small force, 1.25. That's all that is necessary to balance the bottle. Again, we move it closer to 10 centimeters. This time we find we only need 2,5 newtons. But when we bring it closest, so it's the same distance as the bottle from the fulcrum, we see it requires a force of 5 newtons, the same as the weight of the bottle. These are the results obtained in the measurements. So we had a load of 5 newtons, that's our 500 milliliter water bottle. Uh, we first had it 20 centimeters from the fulcrum, 0.2 meters, and later 5 centimeters, 0.05 meters. To work out the moments, you multiply these two numbers. And that gives us 1 for the first lot and 0.25 for the others. Let's have a look at how we balance it. When it's the same distance as the load, when the effort is also 20 centimeters from the fulcrum, we end up with the same force. So the effort must also be 5. When we look at mechanical advantage, the load divided by the effort, we see we get an answer of 1. Most people will say there's no mechanical advantage. Now we bring the effort closer to the fulcrum. We halve the distance and we have to double the force. Bringing it closer, this is four times closer, the force is four times more, and the mechanical advantage is very small, much less than one. But, 
The biggest mechanical advantage is in this situation. The load is close to the fulcrum, 5 centimeters, and the effort is 4 times further out, 20 centimeters from the fulcrum, and we see we get the smallest force needed, the smallest effort to balance the bottle. The mechanical advantage is the biggest, four times. So we can conclude that the biggest mechanical advantage is when the load is close to the fulcrum, short load arm, and the effort is as far from the fulcrum as you can get. But what we gain on force, we lose on distance. So we can lift a heavy load with a small effort, but you have to push it down a long distance in order to lift this only a short distance. Part 2 Will this block sink or float? Will it float end on, side on, flat? Well, how are we going to figure that out? By determining the density. So, first the mass. We balance the 500 milliliter bottle of water which we know is 500 grams because the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter there we are and now we measure that's 5 10 15 20 centimeters and that turns out to be 9,6 centimeters now the anti-clockwise moments equal the clockwise moments so 20 times the unknown mass is 9,6 times 500 grams. And solving that, we get 240 grams for the block. Now the dimensions. 9,8 for the length. six comma eight for the width and the height is 5 centimeters. So the volume calculated is 333,2 cubic centimeters. So density, which is mass over volume, is 240 divided by 333 equals 0.72 grams per cubic centimeter. This is less than the density of water and therefore it will float find out where it will float or how deep it will sink, 72% of the block will be submerged below the water line. So 0.72 times the height of the block gives us 3.6 centimeters below the water line. So we now mark that distance off from the bottom, 3.6 centimeters. And we extend that line right around the block. So let's see whether our calculation works. And voila, there it floats on the line.